Everybody with me, just take a deep breath. Breathe in your nose. Let's try it again. Breathe in. How many of you ever had a time? You guys know what? Oh, whoops! Quick grab that for me. Distractions. You guys know what I'm talking about with distractions? And today has been a day of distractions. Amen. Like you too. And this is like, amen. Where you're trying to get stuff done, you get up, you got so much to get done, and you get distracted. You start running, and, and, and it seems like everything that needs to get done just takes three times as long to happen, four times as much work. You get ready to start praying and, and the phone rings. You get ready to get prepared and all of a sudden you remember five other things that have to be done. And you know what? Distraction's a tool of the devil. So I know God has a plan. I know God has something he wants to do here tonight because whenever that distraction starts creeping in, whenever that distraction starts to happen, Whenever all of a sudden you try to get prepared and you try to get ready for church, and then when you also say, oh, I felt it too. And I know Craig told me before service, he had it too. And, and, and so when you start hearing a distraction happening constantly, that's a tool to stop you from focusing on Christ. That's a tool for you to kind of, wants to creep into service, it wants to creep into our worship time, it wants to creep in so you'll sit here and you'll be worshiping and you'll be trying to focus on him and you'll be distracted. And so we just want to take a moment right now and just push all that aside. So let's everybody stand. Let's stand. And, and, and sometimes as, as a pastor, I sometimes think I'm a coach and i got to get you started. So we're going to start off at the very beginning. We're not going to wait until halfway through worship to raise our hands. Everybody stick your hands up. Raise your hands. Short up a core and a short. Lord, right now we come to worship you. Lord, we lift our hands and surrender to you. We come to worship you. We come to lift your name up. That right now, Jesus, we desire you to be the focus of our service. We desire to come and focus on you. We desire to come and hear your voice. We desire to come and have you be the central thing in our in our service, Lord. We sing our praises and worship to you with nothing else in mind, with thinking of nothing else, with distracted by nothing else. We worship, we exalt, we lift you up. Lord, we come into this service with a soul focus to come to enter into your presence and have you speak to us. That's our intention. That's our goal. That's our focus. That is our one desire. And we worship and exalt you and lift your name up. In Jesus' name.
praying for Israel, for praying for the Jews. Then he continued, um, "Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you set your mind on your on, to gain understanding and to handle yourself before your God, your words were heard. I have come in response to them. But the prince of the per Persian kingdom resisted me twenty-one days. That Michael." One of the chief princes came to help me because I was detained with the king of Persia. So this was Daniel praying for understanding. This angel came and said it took me 21 days to fight for the prince of Persia. I want to give some thoughts. Daniel was a government official. Worked in the king's court. Obviously a very busy man. But he did not allow the busyness of his life to interfere with his prayers. He probably had his responsibilities he did. He, you know, he did them. And whatever time he had set aside, he went and prayed until he got his answer. It took 21 days. This prince of Persia, that's a demon. There's demons assigned to certain territories. I don't want to focus on the dead, but that's the fact. Some are weak, some are strong. If he's called the Prince of Persia, that means he was one of the big ones. Daniel only Daniel defeated him with prayer. We cannot defeat the devil if we don't pray. Amen. We could come up with all sorts of cute light shows and smoke fake smoke and whatever. That's not going to do anything. If we really want to defeat the devil, we must pray. Daniel defeated one of the biggest demons in hell with prayer. And it took three weeks. Sometimes a demon just goes poof and you feel it. Sometimes it's like a brick wall. What in the world am I up against? But you know that if you're on the right side, that brick wall's going to collapse. Amen. That's right. And Daniel was praying for his people. His prayers were needed. If we want to see this revival, God's been promising this new thing. Our prayers are needed. Amen. Another issue. We're at war. Not against flesh and blood, but we're in a spiritual war. Jesus said in Luke 14 31, before you go to war, count the cost. Okay. Let's say, like we do, like Venice, God, um, leave us alone. Or, devil, leave us alone. We won't bother you. Just let us be comfortable and come to our church. What are, what's the cost? Okay. Well, let's weigh the cost. Prayer. Got to give up some of your time. Prayer. Oh, and revival. I'm not talking about coming a few hours and you know, participating in service, going home blessed. I'm talking about being an act of work and revival. It's a lot of work. You're going to be tired, but it's worth it. That's the cost. You give up your time, and you're going to be tired. If you don't want to do that, what do you give up? If you don't pray, if you don't participate in this revival, if you don't participate in the war, you're damning people to hell. I don't mean to be, I, 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 that's the fact. And another thing that bothers me. I work with kids a lot. And I get scared for them because what they're facing is a lot worse than what I'm facing. And if the Lord tarries, when they get to be adults, what in the world? If we don't do anything, what are, we, we care about giving our, teach, teaching our kids to make money and being functional adults. What kind of spiritual heritage are we going to leave them? What are we cursing them to? We don't go to war. When I pray, I, I want our prayer base in this church to be expanded. I've been 
than asking for a specific number, a percentage. I want at least half of whatever our attendance is to be involved in prayer. Right now we average 30, 40 people a week attending. So that means I want to see at least 15 to 20 people should be praying. If you can't make it on Mondays, come early on Saturdays. I mean, we're here, we're praying, practicing worship, but if you want to come in and participate in prayer, that's fine. Mondays, 7 to 8, officially. Uh, a lot of times me or Josh get there at 6. Thursdays, I have you prayer from 6 to 6 30.
And I felt the Holy Spirit then when we were praying in the hospital when they was told me what was going on. I could just imagine that the Lord's hands were coming down through the ceiling. I just knew that He was there. And I, and I, and I was crying. My wife was crying. My little brother was sitting there with me and on and on and on, you know. And, but I, I just said to my God, it's my time I'm ready. And uh, apparently it wasn't my time because like I'm still here. So, but I experienced the Holy Spirit again. That was several years. And then I experienced it here Saturday and I just thought it was awesome. And uh, I, I, I don't know how to explain it to you other than that I, I didn't see anything strange. It was just a, a calmness that come over me. And, and uh, I know that I, when I got home, I kind of like laughed for about eight hours. I, mean, I just started giggling. You know, and I sat there like, hey. So anyhow, that said, so it's a new experience for me. And I truly enjoyed it. And so I just want to say, hey. So there we go. Amen. <laughs> Bill left out a whole bunch. What you guys need to know is, ever since I've known Bill, and I've known Bill for a while. Every since I've met Bill and ever since I've known Bill, Pastor, I just don't know about this Holy Spirit. I, I don't understand it. I, I, don't, I want to know more about it. I don't understand it. I've never experienced it. I don't want to experience it. I don't I want to know more about it. And then, now, Thursday, I said, there you go. So now when you say you've experienced the Holy Spirit, he's like, <laughs> I said, well, yes, I can. And, um, I'm excited for Bill, and as the Holy Spirit continues to work with him and continues to show himself to Bill, nobody teaches you better about the Holy Spirit than the Holy Spirit, amen? Okay. So, um, I'm excited. Have you guys seen this before? Where did it come from? It's the Outreach Center. Does anybody know why we have this particular, it's a pretty funky looking cross. Why this cross? Look around, there's maybe one person that might know. We had a message talking about what this cross means. And I wanted to go over again what is this cross symbolized at Issachar Church. When you come and say, Issachar Church is my church home, what is this cross symbolized to you? Or what should it symbolize? Or what I hope it symbolizes to you after today? The cross, they go and they... Take this cross and they throw it on his back. Anybody want to take a guess on how much the cross weighed? As they throw it on top of his beaten, torn, ripped apart back. Does anybody want to know how much the cross weighed? You got a guess? How much? 400? No, not 400. <laughs> Jesus wasn't Samson or or or, 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 you know. After being beaten, after being beaten to the point of exhaustion and, and, and near death, they throw an 80 pound cross on his back to carry. Each beam weighed 40 pounds. Estimated. And they throw this cross on his back. Jesus carried a cross. He's carrying that cross down the Via Dolorosa. He's carrying that cross for you. He's carrying that cross for me. He reached that place where he collapsed under the weight of his cross. <coughs> Jesus knows when you've gone as far as you can go. <coughs> Jesus knows when you've reached your breaking point. Just when you feel like, I can't live it anymore. It can't be, who, I, I can't be who Jesus wants me to be. Right when he makes that point, you say, Jesus, I'm really tired. Is there ever a break for me? That's the point that will bring extra grace. That's the point that brings extra strength. Romans 5.20 tells us where sin multiplied, grace multiplied even more. 
So I want to challenge you. Youth, you'd say, it's hard to live for God in school. Lord, I can't go and be a witness in my college, in my high school, in my school. I can't go be a witness. I don't have what it takes. I'd say, yes, you do. You need to understand something. Living for Christ, the cross, I've always said the cross is a plus sign, not a subtraction sign. When I, you know, and, and they try to tell you in school that, oh, living for Christ makes you have less fun. Living for Christ makes you less of a person. Living for Christ makes you less of a man or less of a woman. I want to tell you today that living for Christ is a plus sign. God always adds more than he requires. God always comes and gives more than what is needed. He always comes and he adds grace. He adds strength. He adds ability. Everybody else, you know, you want to sit there at church? I've been, to, I've been where you guys are. I've been where the adults are. It's not just the kids. You sit there. Everybody else gets to watch whatever they want on TV. Why can't I? Everybody else listens to music they want to watch. Why can't I? Everybody else goes to the movie theaters. And then they go to charge and raise their hands. And they act like they didn't go to the movie theater and watch the R-rated movie that they wouldn't watch. Why can't I? Because God has us carrying a cross. We're called to carry His cross. You need to understand something. You need to understand Matthew 27, 32. As they were going out, Jesus carried his cross. As they're going out, Jesus drops the cross and they found a man from Cyrene, a man named Simon. This is this man. The, um, King James says, one man. The Holman Christian Buddy Bible study Bible says, this man. They forced this man to carry his cross. He needs men and women that will say, listen, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if I'm popular. I don't care what it looks like at the workplace. Will you carry his cross? Will you put it on your back? Will you carry his cross through Sheridan? Will you carry his cross? Will you carry his cross in Sheridan when you're in the town? What about the workplace when they're sitting there gossiping and they're sitting there in curse words every other word and they're sitting there, you need to understand something. When they're, when they're at the workplace and all of a sudden they're sitting there gossiping and they're talking about the TV show they watched, they're talking about the actual stuff they're doing that they shouldn't be doing and you walk in like this, hey guys, how you doing? They're going to scatter like cockroaches. You going to carry the cross? Pick up your cross. We need to understand something. God is looking for people. God's looking for men. God's looking for women. The Lord needs people who will carry his cross. Take it at home. There you go, it's your cross. You need to understand compelled is the word that King James uses. And that word is forced. Pulled out, yanked. Will you carry his cross unashamedly? Will you carry his cross? Dara, come here. Will you carry his cross? Wait, 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 wait. wait. You need to understand, you can't just be quick. Just because he's carrying the cross and she's carrying the cross, you have to know what this entails. Will you be a godly father and show your kids what it's like to be a man of God that carries the cross? Will you be a godly husband that sits there and says, listen, I'm carrying the cross for my family. I'm carrying the cross. I'm carrying the cross. I'm carrying the Lord's cross. I'm an example of him to my wife, my kids, my family, my friends, your co-workers, strangers, everyone you come across, you carry the cross. Here you go. Go do a tote around the church with your cross. 
We have to carry the cross. You won't always be popular. You have to choose. You have to choose being accepted, being liked, or carrying the cross. That's what your choice is. <coughs> you have to be willing to carry the cross through everything, through all things. You won't always be popular. You won't always be liked. It may make people smudge fish oil all over your stuff at work. But carrying your cross comes at a cost. Hey Amen. Take your cross and you can go sit down. That's yours, Daryl. Thank you. You got to carry the cross. You got to get to a point, and that's what the cross means. That Lord, I'm at the point. I'm not playing games. I'm not playing God games. I'm not going to. Be, I, I want to be different to make a difference. Do you not understand? The cross to me is not a sad thing. You know, some people are crossing this to remember the death of Christ. Not for me. Not for Issachar Church. The Issachar Church is, the cross is what enables me to make, be different so I can make a difference. I carry my cross with pride. I carry my cross with every opportunity I have. That's what the cross means. That's what it means to carry your cross. Now listen, and it, for, for Simon, it was an unexpected cross. And you, there's many of you, if not all of you in here can say, yeah, there's some things I'm going through right now that are really unexpected. I didn't expect this to happen. I didn't expect this to happen. But you know what, that doesn't matter called to carry the cross. And I'm not just an observer. I'm not just somebody that comes and observes. I'm a cross carrier. I want to carry his cross. I want to carry the cross of Christ and carry it well. That's why we have that cross hanging on this on, at Issachar Church. Because we want to make sure that everybody knows you need to understand, when you start really being a Christian, not just saying you're a Christian, or not just being a Christian when you're here at church, when you get him on the inside of you, and you're carrying your cross, you need to understand, sometimes you make people feel uncomfortable. You have to understand that. You make people feel different. Hey, you want me to show you something? For the youth. Jacob, come here. I'm not, I don't want to embarrass anybody. Uh, Elizabeth, come here. Sorry. Not saying this is accurate, but they're not dating. But if you're dating and you're carrying your cross, and you're carrying your cross, you're pretty safe on a date if he's carrying his cross, right? Hands like their own, but his hands are taken care of. Because he's carrying his cross. He's protected because wherever I go, I carry my cross. Wherever she goes, she carries her cross. So there's protection. The cross isn't there to hinder you. The cross isn't there to make you less of a person. The cross is there to protect you, to enhance what God has for you. The problem is we don't take the cross with us. You guys go sit down. <clears throat> we don't take it with us. If you're really carrying a cross, you're protected. The cross belongs in everything we do. <clears throat> everything we do, we carry a cross. Right? Well, Chris, come here. <laughs> You're the only mom and dad sitting together. So, we carry a cross in our family, right? right. <laughs> carry the cross. So, you guys able to, you guys going to carry God's cross? How you raise Skyland? How you teach Skyland? How you train Skyland to be a man of God? You guys carrying the cross when you show the people that live around you? 
what it means to be a godly husband and wife. When you go into ministry as a husband and wife, show them what it looks like to carry the cross. You're going to be the man of the house and you're going to sit there and you're going to carry the cross well in your family, right? You're going to be a problem starting one woman of God and carry the cross well in your family, right? Amen. Carry your cross. That's what it means for us. That's why we have a cross on the wall at Issachar Church. I have one more cross. Who else is carrying the cross? One more. Darlene. Darlene, perfect. Come here. Darlene. You gonna carry the carry the cross? Yes. You're gonna be a godly grandmother? You're gonna show not only your granddaughter, but your grandkids what it means to be a praying grandmother. You gotta be there and direct them and guide them and read them the Bible. To teach them what the Bible says. In some cases, maybe being the only voice they hear of Christ. That's your cross. Amen? Carry the cross. One thing. I have a, a grandson that doesn't believe in God. Amen. Let's pray for him now. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, right now we thank you that as Darlene carries the cross, that our, as Darlene goes and she carries the cross and she shows what it's like to carry your cross, that, Lord, it's going to shine not just in her, but, Lord, it's going to shine out and her grandson is going to see it. Lord, her family's going to see it. That, Lord, she will have family members that will come to you. She will have a husband that chases after you. She'll have kids that chase after you and grandkids that chase after you because she was a woman that carried your cross. In Jesus' name, amen. There's your cross. It's important for us to carry a cross. And you need to understand that, well, Pastor, it's really easy. It's really easy to sit there and claim that we need to carry a cross because, well, you're a pastor. And you don't know what it's like to go into the workplace. You don't know what it's like to work where I work. Well, I also have a bag of dirt. And you know, I'm sure you guys came in and was like, hey, there's a bag of dirt back there, there's a bag of dirt here. And you may be like, what's up with the bag of dirt? Why in the world? What's the, uh, Pastor, I get the cross? What's the bag of dirt about? How many of you know the story of Naaman? The story of Naaman, the, 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 the soldier the, that had um, leprosy. And he came and traveled a long way and then was told, hey, you need, he came and went in prayer and they said, hey, you need to go dip. And in his, in his filthy, dirty water hole. It's like, I got clean water back where I'm at. It's like, no, you need to go dip one. And once you dip seven times, you'll be healed. So he goes out there after being convinced by his servant to go ahead and do it. He goes out there and he dips seven times and then he's healed. Well, you want to know what Naaman did after his healing? Naaman went to God and said, listen, clearly you're the only God. Clearly you're the God that is above all gods and you're the God that I want to serve. But Lord, you need to understand something. I'm going to leave this place. I'm right now in your country. Right now I'm where you're at. But I'm getting ready to leave and I'm getting ready to go back to my homeland. And Lord, at my homeland, they sacrifice babies. True. At my homeland, they go take their own babies and they burn them alive. Lord, in my homeland, they go and they do crude and, and, and things that are not pleasing to you. Yes, Lord, I can serve you here, but Lord, how do I serve you when I get back to home? And then what Naaman asked is he said, Lord, if I go and I feel bags of dirt, and I go fill these bags full of dirt, and then Lord, when I get back home, if I throw this dirt around my house, around my property, and then I go and I build an altar on top of that dirt, would you have that be my holy place? Would you meet with me in a place that's evil, in a place that's, that's doing things that don't please you? If I come carrying my cross, and I come and I have the dirt, and, the dirt, and I come and I, I build an altar unto you, 
Will you meet with me there? And the Lord said, yeah, that's what you do. You take your mule or your horse and you fill them up with bags of dirt. And you go back home and you build me an altar. And then when you, every time you come to that altar, when you're carrying your cross, and you come to that altar, when you're there and you're bright with me, I'll be with you. I'll be there with you. I'll be your God. And you'll be my person. You need to understand, when you're carrying your cross, that's when, I can't tell you how many times I'm almost told, well, you're a pastor, you kind of got a one-way direction to God. I'm like, no, I don't. If you're living right and you're carrying his cross, you have the same one that I have to God. If you're living right and you're carrying the cross and you're carrying his cross, you have the same access to God that I have. That's what Nabal was saying. He didn't have Christ who died on the cross for him yet. But he said, Lord, if I live for you and I take this dirt and I throw it down and I build an altar on top of this dirt, will you meet with me there? The Lord said, yes. I want to challenge you tonight. We live in a culture that, I'll be honest, I am disgusted. Not by how the world lives. I kind of expect the world to live that way. I'm disgusted with how God's people live. To be 100% honest, when I talk about you're going to stick out and you might be rejected if you carry this cross, that goes for the same I'm sure. If you carry his cross, you may even be rejected in church. Because, I'm going to just be honest, there's not a whole bunch of churches where it's popular to be holy. It's a sad statement, but it's a true statement. There's not a whole bunch of churches where it's popular to say, I don't watch things that are detestable to my God. I don't let them be my entertainment. That's not popular. It's not popular to say, I'm sorry, I don't use curse words on Facebook and plaster, you know, bad words and and, and negative words across Facebook. Well, most of of the church does do that. And so when I'm talking about, listen, carry your cross, Live holy. You need to even be ready to find out that may make you stick out and be ridiculed by, quote, Christians. Because it's not popular. But my question is, do you want to be popular? Or do you want to have intimacy like you've never known with the almighty creator of heaven? Do you want to be liked or do you want to be different? Be different to make a difference. I don't know about you, but I want to be different to make a difference. The way Sheridan comes to Christ, the way your family comes to Christ, the way your neighborhood comes to Christ is by you taking your cross and carrying it. Not every other day, not on Sundays, Not when you just think they're looking, but all the time. Hi, and thank you for watching Issachar Church's Saturday night service on a Sunday morning. Hope you enjoyed Pastor Joshua Kennedy's sermon on carrying your cross. Many people actually even receive crosses tonight, and they learn the importance of carrying your crosses in workplace, school, and everyday lives. They might be the only Christ some people even see. Thank you, and hope you enjoy your week.